So this isn't an arbitrary decision. It's based on studies that I've read, systematic reviews, meta-analyses, etc. published in various scientific journals. The first being the Clinical Interventions in Aging in 2019. There was this paper titled, Quote, the efficacy and safety of dutasteride compared with finasteride in treating men with androgenetic alopecia, unquote. This study aimed to evaluate the efficacy and safety of dutasteride and finasteride in treating men with androgenetic alopecia over a 24-week treatment cycle. The results of the study were telling. Based on three articles, which include 576 participants. The researchers found that dutasteride provided a significantly better efficacy in treating androgenetic alopecia compared with finasteride. In terms of total hair count, the mean difference between the two treatments was significant. Subjects using dutasteride experienced an average increase of 28.57 more hairs than those using finasteride. The study also examined the safety of the two drugs by assessing side effects like altered libido, erectile dysfunction, and ejaculatory disorders. It found no significant differences between the two treatments. I've also taken the time to sit down and critically examine another study that compares the efficacy of finasteride to detasteride in androgenetic alopecia, titled, quote, In randomized, active, and placebo-controlled study, the efficacy and safety of different doses of dutasteride versus placebo and finasteride in the treatment of male subjects with androgenetic alopecia, unquote. Researchers Walter Gubin Harsha et al. examined the effectiveness of dutasteride, a type 1 and type 2 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, as well as also a type 3 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, with finasteride, a type 2 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, and also placebo. So they were comparing dutasteride against finasteride against a placebo pill. This study involved men aged 20 to 50 years old with androgenetic alopecia who were administered either dutasteride at 0 0.02, 0 0.1, or 0.5 milligrams a day, or finasteride 1 milligram a day, or a placebo pill over 24 weeks. The primary measure was the hair count in a 2.54 centimeter diameter area at week 24. But the study also evaluated hair count and width in a 1.13 centimeter diameter area using photographic assessments and also change in stage of hair loss as well as looking at health outcomes when taking these drugs. So these were the measurements that they took into account when they were administering these drugs. They wanted to see how these men were reacting and what sort of hair growth they were getting given, given a particular diameter of measurement. Out of the 917 men who were randomized for the study, it was found that dutasteride increased hair count and width in a dose-dependent manner. More specifically, dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams a day significantly increased both hair count and hair width in the 2.54 centimeter diameter area and improved hair growth as per frontal view photographic assessment at week 24 in comparison with both finasteride and placebo group. The statistical significance was a p-value of 0 0.003, 0 0.004, and 0 0.002 respectively against finasteride, and P being less than 0 0.001 against placebo in all categories. The study concluded that dutasteride has proven to be effective in increasing hair growth and restoration in men with androgenetic alopecia and had relatively well-tolerated side effects. The study's limitation was the short duration of 24 weeks, but I would say that if they went longer with this study, maybe let's say a year, you would see dutasteride being even more efficacious than finasteride. But nevertheless, that doesn't mean finasteride sucks or it's not good enough and it, you know, it doesn't work. Finasteride works in a majority of men, but if you're looking to have even better regrowth and thicker, stronger hair, um, specifically for some men, then it would probably, you know, make sense to switch to dutasteride after, let's say, two, maybe three years or five years perhaps, let's say five years, um, if you're not seeing a substantial amount of regrowth or you just want to be more sure in you maintaining ground. 
This particular study provides important evidence that dutasteride can be a viable treatment option for men with androgenetic alopecia, potentially offering more significant hair growth and restoration benefits compared to finasteride or placebo. Other studies also point at dutasteride being more effective, primarily because it blocks more of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, so more of the type 2 5-alpha reductase enzyme, and if we can remember our androgenetic alopecia biology, the type 2 5-alpha reductase enzyme are present mostly in the scalp and prostate, dutasteride is effective at reducing more of this enzyme than finasteride in the scalp, which is probably why it's more efficacious. Remember, we don't really care too much about serum DHT because we care mostly about the scalp DHT. DHT is a paracrine hormone, which means that it's produced at the site of receptors. So testosterone comes in contact with the enzyme, it gets turned into DHT, and then it attacks the receptors, those receptors, if they are susceptible to male pattern baldness, ultimately tell the hair follicle to essentially suppress its hair growth and eventually die. So we're only concerned or mostly concerned with scalp DHT when we talk about the effectiveness of a 5AR treatment. So dutasteride isn't effective in the sense that it's removing all, pretty much all isoenzymes of 5-alpha reductase, whether it's type 1, type 2, type 3, that's not the point. The point is that dutasteride is reducing mostly more of that type 2 5-alpha reductase enzyme in the scalp, and that's why it's becoming more efficacious. Dutasteride Avidart is approved in South Korea for male pattern baldness at 0.5 milligrams a day, whereas in the United States, it's mostly used off-label as a treatment for androgenetic alopecia. For me, it's been very difficult trying to get my hands on oral dutasteride because I need a prescription for it. Like most places and most countries in the world, you do need a prescription for these things. However, most of the dermatologists I've met in person are reluctant to give me it or they simply don't know what dutasteride is. So I went to using telemedicine providers that specifically sold dutasteride. These findings have led me to believe that adding dutasteride to my regimen could potentially provide better results. So those studies that I've read, that is pretty much the reason why I'm adding dutasteride to my stack. And of course, it's essential to consult your healthcare provider before making any changes to your treatment. I have done so, and I'm excited about this new step in my journey. This is not just about delaying the progression of androgenic alopecia, but it's also about improving the quality of life. It's about feeling more confident and comfortable in your own skin, and anyone who's taking this journey to try to stop hair loss, I'm all for it. And I you know, applaud you taking these steps to actually see what you can do. See what benefit you can get out of it. Remember, everyone's experience with hair loss is different. And what works for one person might not work for another. So always consult with a healthcare professional before making any changes to your treatment. And thanks for joining me today. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace.